In today's Dollars and Cents, Megan explains how different types of retirement income are taxed. Megan? Now, taxes can be confusing. One of the great ways that we have found to talk about taxes and how your money is individually taxed is by identifying them in a handful of, we'll call them buckets. So the first bucket we're gonna talk about is the taxable bucket. So think about any investment that you have that's gonna send you a 1099 in January or February that said you made interest on this account and you have to pay tax on it. If you're thinking about the bank, the best example I can give you is a CD. Now, CD rates are better than what they used to be, so let's assume that you made a little bit of interest on your CD. You're gonna get a 1099 that says you have to pay tax on that money. Another example would be a brokerage account. Let's say you have a brokerage account where you buy some stocks, maybe some mutual funds. If there's dividends and interest that kicks off those funds, you have to pay tax on that every single year. So this taxable bucket, while it might not be super tax efficient, is usually available to you. It's usually liquid. I mean, if you wanna liquidate that CD, you just go to the bank and get your money. You might have a small penalty. If you want to take money out of your brokerage account, you might sell your stock or sell your mutual fund and you can usually get that money right away. So the taxable bucket serves a purpose. We need to have some of that money that you can get your hands on quickly and that also doesn't have an age restriction because the next bucket we're gonna talk about is the tax deferred bucket. So think about compounding interest. So in this bucket, it's investments where you put your money into the account but the money hadn't been taxed yet. So 401ks, IRAs, which are individual retirement accounts, 403bs, maybe you're a teacher or you work in the nursing community and you have a 403b, a pension plan, a 457, which would be a deferred comp plan. These are all accounts where you put your money in either between your employer and they took it out of your paycheck or you took it out of your bank account and you invested yourself but you've never paid tax on that money. So as that account grows, nobody's sending you a 1099 every year. You don't have to pay tax on the earnings that it's making in that account. So now that money is compounding and it's vesting and it's accruing over time. But eventually, when the money comes out of that bucket, you're gonna have to pay tax on the money. And you're not gonna have to pay tax on just what you put into the account, you're gonna have to pay tax on everything that came out of the account. So what you put in and all the growth along the way. Now the other thing that goes into this bucket is annuities. Now some people have connotations of annuities and I'm just gonna tell you from a tax perspective, any money that goes into these annuities will grow tax deferred. Again, that means I'm not gonna have to pay tax on the earnings that I make on an annual basis. In those accounts, I won't have to pay tax on the account until I take the money out on the back end. Now, in most of the tax deferred bucket, they're considered retirement accounts. It's money that I built up while I was working for an employer or I put my own money back. So I have age restrictions on those dollars. I usually can't touch them until 59 and a half. Sometimes I can touch them a little bit earlier with certain uh, situations, but I'm going to have to take money out at a certain time. Those are called required minimum distributions. And that might either be age 73 for you or it might be 75, but either way, the IRS is gonna make you start taking distributions. You might ask why? Well, they want their money. If they know there's $19 trillion that's sitting out there in these accounts that have never been taxed, then when you get to those ages, 73 or 75, they want you to take those dollars out. So therefore they get their piece of your pie. But why would anybody get into a agreement with anyone where they hold all the cards? And that's what an individual retirement account is. Any of those dollars in the tax deferred accounts, the IRS holds all the cards. They're gonna tell you how much you have to take out and they're gonna tell you how much you have to give to them in the way of taxes. So the final bucket we're gonna talk about is my favorite bucket, it's the tax-free bucket. How do we get money into this tax-free account? Now you can have money in those accounts in Roth IRAs, Roth 401ks, Roth 403bs, etc. So retirement accounts that you just put money into on an after-tax basis. And if you think about it from the standpoint of, let's say, the seed and the harvest, think about all you farmers out there, would you rather pay tax on the seed, what goes in the ground, or the harvest, what comes out on the back end? 
I'd rather pay tax on the seed. Smaller amounts I'm paying today at today's dollars, at today's rates, so that later on, when I take this money out, 100% of it's mine. I don't have to give any to the IRS. I don't have to worry about what future tax rates are going to be, not only for me, but for my family if this money goes on to the next generation. So in the tax-free bucket, I've got those individual retirement accounts that I've invested in on an after-tax basis. I can also use life insurance. Again, if you position it correctly, it can be a benefit to you and to your family that's income tax-free. And in addition to that, you can use municipal bonds, which might be state tax exempt, but will always be federal tax exempt. So the idea around tax bucketing and strategies says the more money I have, the more efficient I want to be with my dollar, the more I move to the right and get into those tax-free buckets. So your taxable bucket, your tax-deferred bucket, and then your tax-free bucket. Now planning for us and efficient strategies around taxation is gonna be different for everybody. So I think the goal of this is to understand how each dollar that you have in income is taxed to you, how each dollar in your investments are taxed to you. And then let's sit down and see if it makes sense to reposition some of those assets to be more efficient for you and your family. Again, we know taxes are going up, let's be efficient with every dollar that you have in your pocket. That's what I have to say in dollars and cents. Thanks, Megan. And still to come, we'll hear directly from you in our Q&A section. But first, here's a special offer from Megan and the team at Jones Advisory Group. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 